Hi guys, Peter Finch here and welcome down to this week's Tech Tuesday, your weekly look at everything to do with technology in golf. It's been relatively quiet on the tech front as far as new releases are concerned this week, so we're going to have an old-fashioned q and I'm going to go through loads of questions which have come in, pick five out, which may have not been answered before, and then answer them. Uh, simple as that, really. <laughs> So first question here from Dave A. Richard on Instagram. Do you feel amateurs look at equipment in the wrong direction? Driver down to putter, should they spend more for a great putter and buy a good used driver? So I think yes, it is a case of amateurs looking this in the wrong direction, but probably not from the direction that you're thinking about. It's another direction. If you think about it, you're on a roundabout, you're going right and then left. <laughs> I don't know where I'm going with it. Basically, I think a lot of amateurs would benefit from not spending any money on drivers, any money on irons, any money on putters, and spending that money instead on lessons. It's a question that does come up quite a lot about people asking what they should be spending their money on as far as golf is concerned. And obviously, this being Tech Tuesday, you know, we'll answer your question, and I would say putters are probably more important than drivers for many people. However, However, a lot of golfers do think that by spending money on clubs, and I get this question a lot as far as one length irons are concerned, about people thinking, you know, it might be the answer, people thinking it might be the way to improve their game, when in fact it could, you know, tweak and it could change things, it could make things a little bit better, but really what's going to make things better is by improving technique overall. Remember, golf clubs are just metal sticks at the end of the day. And some of these metal sticks are better than other metal sticks. But it is the person who is swinging that stick around their body which really makes the difference. And if your technique isn't adapted properly to swing that metal stick effectively, then it doesn't matter what that metal stick is. So first of all, learn how to swing the metal stick. Then go get metal sticks. So a question here from Preston Ten Hammond. Are you and Rick secondhand club challenge again this year? So yes. Yes, me and Rick will be doing the Second Hand Club Challenge again this year. We are trying to get some dates together for that, uh, and it is something which will be coming your way. I know a lot of you guys love these videos that we do with Golf Bidder about the changes in technology and what you can get for your money at a lesser price point, used clubs, and yes, we will be doing it again this year. This question here from CMB Master 10 Opinions on ball prices going up again with the new Project A and title is soft. This is a question I do get asked a fairly lot and this is a question I get asked a lot you know what is the best ball to use and it does depend on, depend on the individual I use a TP5 ball which is a pretty low spinning golf ball but it still has decent feel around the greens I'm starting to sound like a bo ba the bo the back of a golf ball box here um, but that is what I found really suits my game the best out of the balls I was trying last year I've not retried since then you know so there may be a better option out there but please bear in mind i don't pay for my golf balls so with all the videos that i do on the channel the equipment companies know that when that equipment comes into my hands when i use it and when i show it to you guys it's great exposure so i don't pay for that equipment now if i was to pay for those balls i whew, It'd be tough because I go through a lot of them, you know, with all the filming, all the practice and all the rest of it. It's a definite key consideration to bear in mind. But there are balls out there at this moment in time for a lower price point that really they would suit many amateurs down to the ground more than buying that premium golf ball. Because a lot of the times the premium golf balls to get the most out of them, you've got to hit them hard. You know, you've got to hit them consistently as well. And in many cases, there's golfers who I coach who are off a 10 to 15 handicap who would benefit from playing more of a cheaper ball, say a Pinnacle, for example, or a Strix and Softfield, whatever it may be, than they would spending cash and loads of money on Pro V1s or TP5s or whatever it may be. A lot of people tend to turn their noses up at cheaper balls because there is a perception that they are worse balls. But in many cases, and for many players, if you actually analyse the data on which they hit their shots, those types of golf balls would actually give them more benefit than buying a real premium ball. And you will find this a lot with golf, and you will find this a lot with companies, the prices of the premium products 
they are going up because there's more margin and companies want to make more money. It is as simple as that. But do not be afraid of going for the cheaper golf ball. Don't be afraid of trying stuff. This Velocity goal, I got sent through these Titleist balls to do a giveaway on uh, on Instagram. I need to send these out actually. But this Velocity ball, it's a fantastic golf ball. And this would suit so many people more than spending loads of loads of money on a you know, top of the range Trixon, for example, or you know, insert brand. So just be willing to experiment with some of the cheaper balls and I think you might be surprised. Question here from Gareth Gilveray uh, at Pivich Golf. Love the content, thank you very much. Smiley face golf flag. Looking at Ted Potter Jr.'s winning what's in the bag, so he won at Pebble Beach. Do you think more players both on tour and the amateur level could benefit by playing with hybrids rather than long irons? Um, I, I wouldn't really say that about tour players. You know, tour players do experiment and um, they will use the clubs that are best for them. And they are exposed to the best clubs, the best fitters, so they will know more than, say, a 15 handicap goal for a club who just plays on the weekends. Having said that, hybrid clubs are still, I would say, vastly underused by amateurs, and if you want to expand on that, I would probably say that fairway woods are vastly underused by amateurs as well. There are so many good fairway wood clubs out there at this moment in time, and rather than playing with a three iron, with a four iron, with a five iron, with a six iron, you know, getting a seven wood in there, getting a 26 degree hybrid in there will do so many more players the world of good. But there is a little bit of stigmatism attached to it. You know, it's a little bit more macho to pure a four iron to strike it down there rather than to get that little hybrid out and just, you know, dink it down there. It, it is a little bit of an ego thing at times. However, what a lot of people do find is when they test out hybrids, when they get fitted for hybrids, they will perform much better in a wider range of circumstances. So yes, I would say that on an amateur level, certainly hybrids are underused. On a professional level, I wouldn't really say so. You know, those guys strike it well enough to be able to use long irons that are full effect. So a question here from Niall O'Sullivan. Speakers on the golf course, what side are you on? It doesn't personally bother me. I've got to be honest, I have played a couple of rounds with music blasting out of a buggy, certainly in the States. And in certain circumstances, yeah, I, I don't really mind it. I think most of the time when I go play, when I go play, it's vlogging or it's practicing or it's playing in competitions. And none of those really suit themselves to playing music. But I think for a social round, it certainly wouldn't bother me. And it's certainly something that I wouldn't be opposed to, you know, if I played with someone. I think this is a much more American thing than anything else though. Certainly in the UK, I have, or I don't think I've ever played with anyone or seen anyone anywhere on any golf course playing music out of a buggy while they play golf. Uh, for a start, there's not really that many buggies used in the UK. Predominantly people do still walk. And if they do have a ride on or a push trolley, you know, they do tend to try and stay on their feet more than anything else. Whilst in the States, it's a very different uh, type of course etiquette at times as far as buggies go. So most courses, not most courses, a lot of courses over there have been built specifically to carry buggies. And I've played on courses in the States where physically walking it would be an absolute war of attrition. So it's a very different type of setup to a lot of courses. But hey, if you enjoy it and you want to get your favorite tunes on, then absolutely go for it. Right guys, thank you so, so much for watching this week's Tech Tuesday. Please subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Follow me on my other social media platforms as well. And we will see you down here next time.